Greetings, ladies and laddies, and welcome back to another episode of our Lumineth speed painting series. In the last and first episode, we painted the Light of Eltharion, one of the most gorgeous models in the range, and personally, I was really pleased with the outcome. But as strong as he is on the battlefield, he does need an army to clean up the ones that didn't perish in his wake. That being said, Today we will start with the Vanari Auralan Wardens, the backbone of every Luminaire force and, quite possibly, the coolest Spearman Games Workshop has put out yet. The cast is of a very high quality and the mold lines are fine and easy to get rid of. The assembly, however, was surprisingly difficult, at least for me being used to the rather simple models of the old High Elf Spearmen. Two things I want to quickly address here. First, when all the 10 wardens are built, you'll be left with all the bits you can see here. So if you plan on kit bashing, this kit is a gold mine for you. And second, the very long spears. <laughs> Sheesh, looks about 10 inches to me. They are connected to the model at the wrists, so keep in mind that magnetization is probably not possible here. In terms of the color scheme, I wanted to lean on the concept of Sunfire Elves from the Dragon Prince, an amazing show with extraordinary art direction. Having the models primed white, we start with a bright orange on their skirts. In this early stage, there's nothing to look after, so we can take our bigger brushes here. Next we paint the undergarment in a dark burgundy, meaning the cloth and the clipping of the skirt and the sleeves above their braces. This part at the back is also part of the undergarment, but I kinda wanna paint it like the armor to make the queras more all-encompassing. Tell you what, we'll do both and you can choose what you like for yourself. Next we mix a little bit of light terracotta and lots of white to get this pale cream color for the armor just like we did with Elfarion. We also paint the sheaves for their swords and the plumes on their helmets with this. After these rather simple tasks, it's time for a more difficult one. Taking a true metallic gold, we paint all of the scale mail and the ornamental frames of their armor. The latter is especially tedious and probably the most time-consuming part of this paint job, so you may very well skip it and only focus on the scales and ornaments. Either way, the gold should be rather warm and more on the orange spectrum to be in line with the overall tone of the color scheme. To paint the plume, we take the same orange we used on the skirt and paint the upper two thirds with it. The line should roughly be up to the gems embedded into the hair, leaving some of the cream white still visible. The High Warden gets a different design though, with some of the intervals of the plume fully orange, and others fully white. Finishing the plume on the regular wardens, we take our dark purple and paint the very tips with it, achieving a contrasting frame. We can also use this purple for the gems in their helmets, as well as the gems in their plumes, after painting the bumps themselves with gold first. The rest of the paint job is really just detailing. For the straps holding the sheath in place, I snuck another accentuating color in, just because I really like it. We paint the shaft of the spears in our dark purple, before we tend to the shoes with a pale brown. For the skin, we take a light terracotta and paint the hands and face, as well as the visible neck, which is quite difficult, so don't try to rush it too much. Then we take a dark true metallic silver and paint the blades of their weapons. Because the spears are so long, the brush easily bends them while painting the tip, so be sure to give the shaft proper support while painting. I also recommend the silver for painting the lantern of the High Warden. These little shields right here are the connection points for the real shields to sit on, so we paint them according to the inlay we want the shield to have. In this case, mustard brown. To easily fill in the markings of these flags, we first moisten up the area with a bit of water, and then let the paint just bleed from the brush right into the stamp. 
coming quite close to the finishing line, we just need to paint the bases with a dark brown earth paint for the ground, and then some random dots of mustard yellow for more texture. I chose to paint the tactical rock of the High Warden in a dark blue tinted grey, just like we did with Elfarion. All of the base colors are now fully applied, and I gotta say, in spite of having a rather plain design, they do take a surprising amount of time to paint. Well, as always we now want to introduce some nice shadows, by taking a generous amount of brown wash and almost drowning the mini with it. Make sure to use a brown wash here, as it complements the warmth of our color scheme better than a cold black wash would. The only things that do get a black wash here are their blades. This is the result after the wash, and as you can see, it really doesn't have a too dramatic effect on the colors, but gives the model lovely shadows and ties the paint job together nicely. The last thing we have to do here now is to paint the trims of the skirt in our cream white. Angle the brush as I do here, and you should have no trouble finalizing your own minis. Being done with the soldiers themselves, it's time to take care of their shields. For this I would recommend you to have a cocktail stick, cut it in half, and attach the flat end to the back of the shield with a drop of superglue. This will keep your fingers out of the way, making the shields much more comfortable to paint. I have found that a black primer works best for the scheme of the shields, but if you were to take a more light approach, a white primer would serve you better. We start by painting the center of the shield in a dark burgundy, and work our way up from there, over a dark purple and a dark red, until we reach a bright red in the middle. Each new coat should more and more resemble the shape of a tear, except for the last one, which should act as a frame for the whole rune. Speaking of, the rune gets a similar treatment, starting from a bright orange, over a light beige, to a bright white on the top or the connection points. And so we easily get ourselves an awesome glow effect. The frame of the shield gets painted in a true metallic gold, and the inlay, as formerly mentioned, in a mustard brown. Lastly, the cocktail stick can be removed, and we got ourselves one hell of a shield. Mounted on our wardens, it really shows the fearsome potency the host of light wields. Now we just give the earth a light beige dry brush and finish the speed paint by giving the base a smooth black trim. Before we come to the result though, I singled one soldier out and painted it while having a timer running, to test if I really could call this guide a speed paint. As you can see, I was a little overexcited when painting these minis, so he already had some paint on him when I started the clock, which I will of course take into consideration. After everything was done, the clock set to 1 hour and 2 minutes, excluding drying time. With the first 3 steps in there, I'd say we roughly are at 1 hour and 10, which I don't think is bad at all for the miniatures as we see them here. But please, let me know what you think about this. The speed painting part is now fully complete, and personally, I am quite happy with what we got here. The Wardens are definitely tabletop ready, and the extra glow effect really stands out nicely. However, you might have noticed that this is not the end of the video, and that's because I want to show you guys a handful of extra steps on how to take your models to the next level. First and foremost, if you want to do this, the shield needs to be detached from the model, as it is far easier to work with this way. Starting on the skirt again, we take a pale ochre and pick out the folds and raised areas in general. To highlight the armor, we can use the same color as we used for the base, as the wash dulled the first layer down by so much. On the breastplate, we only want to highlight the upward facing parts over the ornament, for which a few touches are usually enough. The Sunfire Elves in Dragon Prince have these amazing swords, glowing with power and able to cut through everything. Painting this on your minis is a lot easier than you might think. We start with a bright red on the entire blade, and work our way up from there. 
from red to orange, to yellow, to a light beige, and finally to a bright white at the tip, always leaving a bit of the previous color still showing. Another cool lighting effect can be achieved on the High Warden's Lantern. We start with a light pink and then bring more and more white into the mix. I honestly didn't do a good job here, but I hope that you get what I wanna bring across. Okay, the very last thing I wanna do here is really tedious fine work. So if you don't wanna do it, your miniatures will still look awesome without it. I came across the amazing miniature painter Javi Lozano, who gave his wardens some fierce looking shields by painting some glowing runes onto them. And I want to try it too. First we need to map out where the runes are gonna go with some bright red dots. Then we take some bright orange to sketch out the rough shape of the runes. It's okay to make them wider than they should be, as this will actually be important for the glow effect. Then we paint the fine shape of the runes into the orange sketch using a light beige, and finally, give the brightest highlights using a pure white. It's very much okay to cheat a little and paint just a few shapes resembling the elven runes. The important part is that the runes are in a pretty tight ring around their big counterpart in the middle. This is one of my better attempts, and I'd be lying if I said this wasn't hard. But don't be afraid to try it out either. Here you can see my very first attempts, next to my best versions, so don't think that I achieved this first try, and don't be discouraged if it doesn't work right away. But again, the version without the runes looks badass as well, so whatever you're gonna go with, it'll look great. But how long does it take to do all these upgrades? Well, let's make another test. <laughs> I tell ya, this is a lot easier when I don't have the camera between me and the model. The clock tells us that these upgrades take around 15 to 20 minutes extra per model, and for the result, I think that it's worth it. The first batch of the Vanari Auralan Wardens is now done, and I am quite happy with them. They look truly otherworldly, and I did enjoy painting them, as much as you hopefully enjoyed watching this video. As always, I will have a full guide with all of the exact paints down in the description of the video. And in case you have any questions, maybe a couple of suggestions, be my guests and share your thoughts in the comment section. I really enjoy reading them, and especially tips like Layla answers here are always welcome. In the next video of the speed painting series, we'll continue with the Venari Dawn Riders to fall right in the enemy's flanks while the wardens hold the center. Oh man, I sure do hope that nothing gets in the way of that. Ah, uh, shit. This unit's really gonna be just elves, huh? Well, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more speed painting guides like this one, as well as all the other stuff I have waiting for this year, feel free to hit the subscribe button. As I am really looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Until then, take care.